Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new episode of I Didn't Talk for Educators Live. I am your host, Kwame Sarfo Mensa, back with some new material. And today we have a special guest. Now, as you remember, this show is for the unsung heroes of education. And we have an unsung hero today who is even in the classroom yet, but he is aspiring to be in the classroom. So just to give you a short history of our connection, about a few months ago, I was honored to be on uh, these two brothers' podcast, Future Educators Talk. Uh, these two gentlemen are aspiring teachers who are trying to get into the teacher profession, they're passionate about education, and they want to make a difference in people's lives. And to see two young men at their age who are passionate about education and want to pursue this as a career field is very endearing, and I'm honestly impressed. And I just told myself that I needed to get them on the show so that you all could hear their story because they are all over the internet. They have the Future Educators Talk podcast, but they have so many other shows that they're doing uh, throughout the day, providing some great content about their thoughts on education and what they would want to do to change what's going on. So without further ado, I want to bring uh, uh, one half of the Future Educators Talk crew, uh, Mr. Darren Frett. Hi. Hey. How are we doing, Darren? I'm doing good. All right. Well, thank you for being on the show. Been waiting a while for this to happen, so I'm glad that we're finally able to have that happen. Yes, 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 yes. And I know that uh, Damien, the other half of the team wasn't able to make it because I know he's doing some projects and staying busy, but he's with us in spirit. Yes. And I know he's going to, we'll, we'll have a chance to uh, connect at a later time. But uh, let's get right into the conversation. So before we, we talk about uh, Future Educators Talk and the other projects you're all doing, just share a little about yourself and what got you excited about wanting to be an educator? Yeah, sure. Um, so, of course, um, I'm one of the co-hosts of Future Educators Talk podcast. Um, I live in Durham, North Carolina, uh, born and raised in Durham, actually. Uh, you know, I have siblings, uh, one brother, one older brother, and two sisters. Um I'm working, uh, work, got a, uh, working at a job. Um, so let's, my hands are kind of busy, uh, busy. Um, so it actually, the what brought me into the education field is actually back in, I would say, eighth grade. Uh, my math okay. teacher, uh, Mrs. Murphy, um, I had the opportunity to teach in quotations, teach, um, my class had to do, uh, I think it was proportions. And basically I took over her classroom just for that period, uh, oh, just wow. for my, that class time. And that's really the, the, the spark of, okay, this is what I really want to do. Wow. And that all from being able to teach a portion of a math lesson? Yes. Yes. Wow, that's that's great. And what's even better is it's math. And as you know, I'm a math teacher. Yes. yes. So yes, I have a bias. I will admit that I have a bias for people who love math because it's very rare and people just shy away from it. But mm -hmm. you're taking it head on. Yes. So that's so that's a lot of respect on my end. Now, so when did you and um, Damien meet? Because I know that's your co-host and you all, all do a lot of projects together. So how did the two of you uh, meet and decided, okay, we wanna do this 
podcast and the other projects? So initially, um, me and my best friend was going to create a broadcast called Rama Central, which was another broadcast, but that didn't really, you know, come through. That didn't really, we didn't really get it started. And then I had this idea pop into my head, like, why not create a broadcast about future teacher, future teachers, because you don't see any broadcast, you don't talk, you don't hear any broadcasts about future teachers, you know? Mm -hmm. So I reach out to Damien. I was like, why not we, I was like, how would you like to talk about, uh, about topics that no educators talk about? He's down. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really took off from there. So, and here we are in, in our third season, continuing that, that mission. So. And let's, let's focus on that for a little bit. So you start Future Educators Talk mm -hmm. and you all are doing episodes pretty much every day. Cause I follow you all. I follow you every day. So I know how frequently you guys are putting out episodes and other content. But what's mm -hmm. the underlining mission of Future Educators Talk and also all the other uh, um, projects you're doing? What's the mission? So our big mission, our, you know, our big mission is to raise that 2% um, because there's only about 2% of African-American males that are teachers. So what we're trying to do is push out to all the middle schoolers and all the high schoolers that are out there to see if we can get them interested in that field so that we can raise that 2% because that 2% is really low and we need to do something about it. So. No, I, I definitely agree with that. And there are a lot of school districts who are creating programs and other initiatives to try to recruit more black male educators um, into the profession. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like it's not about the recruiting of them. I feel mm -hmm. like we're doing a great job of that. It's more about the retention of them. How do we keep them in the profession? Right. Because right. once you get them in, how do we keep them in the profession and motivate enough to want to continue? Mm -hmm. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Honestly, you have to create some type of, uh, figure out a way, you know, what they like, what they don't like. You got to figure out the differences. Why, why do they want to leave? Uh, I believe, uh, Damien in his, um, in his broadcast, Education Thoughts with Damien Anderson, he talked about, uh, why is, um, black teachers leaving? Why are teachers leaving? And I do believe he talked about some some ways of why teachers are leaving. It's because of those reasons. And we need, actually school districts need to fix that problem so that us can actually stay in the district so that, you know, they can either get promoted or do something really good in their field or in their profession. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, something definitely needs to be done. And there are certain measures that have to be put in place in order for teachers to stay in mm -hmm. because we're needed in the classrooms. And yes. there's all the research in the world that's going to justify that. Now, let's shift gears and talk about uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So as you already know, we have a lot of teachers a lot of school districts who have transitioned into online learning mm -hmm. and there have been some pros and cons uh, with that transition. Mm -hmm. So I just want to find out from you, given the challenges that are being presented by this pandemic, what are some ways in which students can stay motivated in their learning during this pandemic, um, in your opinion? I would say take care of yourself, mental health. Uh, find ways, you know, play video games or do something that you really listen to music, uh, play chess, go outside, uh, 
something in that nature. Um, you know, like I did, uh, I think a couple of days ago, I went outside well, I went to a park and just take pictures, you know, relaxing. Uh, that is some ways because I, I can pretty sure that the students are pretty stressful during these times. They can't see their friends. They can't see their teachers. And they, I got, and they got all this work coming in too as well. And so that's really stressful on, on their part. But not only for them, but also for the parents as well. Because now the parents has to come in and figure out what to do. Because now remember, teachers are teaching the lesson. Now it's the parents' turn to teach the lesson. So now they're trying to figure out ways so that this, their child can understand the lesson as well. And, and just to add on to what you're saying, is not just regular parents. We're talking about mm -hmm. teachers who are also parents. Right. So they're doing two roles at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of their own children and their family members in the household, and they still are responsible for providing instruction to students who aren't even their own children. Right. So that's, so that's an even bigger situation we're dealing with here. Now, at some point, we're all going to have to go back into the classroom, back into our schools. Uh -huh. Now, I'm sure you've been listening to the CDC. You've been listening to some of the news about uh, guidelines for that transition as far as how desks should be positioned. They should be six feet away from each other. Um, pretty much one-way hallways, half filled capacity school buses. So there are a lot of different ideas that are being uh, put out in the atmosphere uh, by entities that aren't even in the field of education. I mean, we're talking about health experts and other people. So I wanna find out from you, in your opinion, what will be the best way for school districts to transition back into the classroom in the aftermath of COVID-19? Hmm. That's actually a good question because we never know. We never know if COVID-19 is going to go away. So hmm. the really the best answer in case we do, in case we go back to the normal, as everybody would say, um, I would say kind of like put hand sanitizers everywhere like everywhere, um, have teachers sanitize every desk um, or have the students do it or somebody in that nature just to sanitize each and every desk because uh, that's what I do at work as well. We sanitize everything that the customer touch, the doors, the handles, the touch screens, everything. Everything that touch the customer touch, we sanitize. That's pretty much I would like to see or look um, on social media in case teachers and students does go back to, uh, to school. Um, another one is, I would say yes to the desk of that six feet apart, because, you know, if you cram all them together in rows, just imagine how many germs, you know, just imagine teaching every desk. Um, for that. So I, I do agree to that. So in some parts, I do agree. And in some parts, I disagree with the CDC recommendations. Now, just focusing on the, the desk guidelines. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, as you know, there were a number of schools that already had overcrowded classrooms. Right. Either because Students are being packed into the classrooms for different reasons or just a case of the room just being way too small mm -hmm. for the number of students who are supposed to be in it, just being over capacity. So how do you see that six feet apart guideline working out in that situation where you're trying to fit maybe 30 plus kids in a room, but you can't do it if you don't have the space to do it, it, it right. it's almost not possible, you know? Right. 
it's like we have to find a different solution to that problem because 30 desks in one I would say medium sized classroom it's probably not going to fit at all and if you do the 6 feet apart it's it's not going to work it's just not going to work so we have to find a different solution to fit every desk in case they do the six feet apart desk because because just imagine if you do the six feet with 30 desks it's just going to go right to the hallway right out to the hallway and so it it's it's not going to work and and that's really the point that many teachers are making i think what's troubling about the guidelines at least mm-hmm. most of them is the fact that the decisions are being made by people who are not in the classroom, people who are not professionals within the education field. And I think that, in my opinion, is what's most problematic about it because mm-hmm. if anybody knows what the detrimental effects are to these guidelines, it's us. Because right. we're, in the, we're in the trenches every single day and we have that perspective of what the consequences are if we were to abide by these guidelines. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Now, now I know that you're currently in school, correct? Um, going to school actually this, actually, hopefully this, this summer. Yes. Okay. So the, I think the likelihood of you going into the school Mm-hmm. is probably slim to none um, given what's happening with COVID-19. Right. So I right. think that brings me to my question about having maybe stack, uh, staggered schedules because I know there's been talk about having students come in maybe two days a week to talk to the teacher or get a lesson and then the other three days they're on the computer uh, getting some virtual work. And then they alternate the following week, and then that pattern continues uh, throughout the year. So, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think it's going to work um, because you have to think about the students' internet as well. You got to think about how uh, the students' transportation. How would I get there? How would I get back? Because, you know, some parents are, are working still during this pa- uh, pandemic. So they have to f- fit a, a time in their schedule just to take their child to school, just to see their teacher. Or take a time out of their day just to do that. And plus, you got to think about the, the student's internet. Some, some homes don't even have internet at home. That's some true. students have to use a uh, hot spot, you know, they might be able to use it probably once or mm-hmm. twice a week. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you can't really do anything really. So it's, you know. Yes, that's, that's very true. It's very true. Now, um, I know we're getting close to the end of our conversation, but I want to give you all a chance to talk about the other projects you're doing. So outside of future educators talk, there are a lot of, there's like an offspring of projects that you all are (laughs) putting out there. And honestly, I cannot keep up with y'all. It seems like (laughs) every other day, y'all are putting out another um, episode, a brand new show. Um, so I need you to help me catch up with what's going on. Help me catch up and okay. everybody else. Okay. So since you left uh, of you being a guest co-host, yeah, there has a lot has a lot has been happening. Um, mm-hmm. Number one, um, we created a show, another podcast called Across the State, um, mm-hmm. which was a podcast me living in North Carolina and Damien living in Tennessee. That's where we talk about our personal lives, you know, outside of future educators talk, 
you know, and what's happening. Um, so that happened. Um, and then secondly, my mini series, Fret Education Thoughts, um, that is happening still. Um, the reasoning why um, is because I work pretty much every day, Monday through Friday, and I work during the mornings. And so there isn't time because normally I work in the afternoons before, you know, before I moved um, to a new, I would say, job. Mm-hmm. Um I used to work in the afternoons and be able to record with Damien's in the mornings. But now since I'm working in, in the mornings, I can't, there's no time for me to record with Damien. Cause once basically once I get up, I have about 20 to 30 minute window to record. And then after that, I have to go to work. So, so that's the reasoning behind that. Then Damien had, I know there's a lot. <laughs> Damien um, has a podcast now called Education Thoughts with Damien Anderson. Yes. Um, you may remember that he has a YouTube series that has now transfer- transferred into a podcast now. Okay. So that is happening. And then thirdly, hopefully I get this right, um, he has a thing going on on IG live on our future educators talk um, Instagram live with at home with Damien where Damien talks about topics some good topics basically good positive vibes on there and at the end of the episode um, a, a quote so he's on there Tuesday through Thursdays at 10 so that is it that's all. You sure? Y'all sure that's it? <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? That is all. Okay. Um, we are, right now, we are preparing for our four, for our fourth season, which will be our one-year anniversary of Future Engineers Talk. So we are preparing for that. Um, so we got a whole lot of special guests coming up. So we're preparing for that. And, and listen, I actually saw some of the guests and these are heavy hitters in the education mm. field. So yes. if you don't mind just sharing a few of the guests who'll be on the show so that people can tune in. Um, so a little sneak peek here on for season four. Now this is not official, but we would like to have them on. We will have First up, we have Devin Evans. Okay. We will have Sebastian Sanders. Mm -hmm. We will have... You may remember Mr. Luther. Yes, we will have him back again for this season. Okay. We have Mr. Harrison. You may remember him from the um, hashtag BME. S talk. Oh, on Twitter. um, Daily Harrison. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. We will. Um, yep. We will have him for next season. We will have Jonathan Pillum the second. We will have him next season. Um, let's see here. We will have Mr. Brandon from To Be Continued broadcast. We will have him again. Next season, uh, we will have Brian Keith Harris. Oh, um, next I, yeah. season, he's yeah. actually going to be on the show um, next month. So, yeah, to and for that, he'll be on this podcast. Yes, so. yes, we have Sean Woodley. Come on, yeah. on, there's just y'all better buckle up because yeah, this you season got, you got Dr. Huge. Sean Woodley. Yes. Oh, that's my buddy. That's yes. that's. Yeah, that's a good brother. So shout out to Dr. Shaw Willie. Teach Hustle Inspire. Mm. Make sure you go get a shirt from him. But but yeah, I'm I'm impressed by the lineup. I think it's gonna be maybe your best season yet for future yes. educators talk. And it's just been growing little by little mm-hmm. with each season passing. And I've yes. seen the evolution. And I can honestly say that now I could be more happy for 
for you and Damien and just the amount of work you put into this every single day. Um, you already know I'm a fan. Yes. And whenever you all put out the posts, you know, I'm, I'm liking them. I'm sharing them with people because they got to hear what you guys are putting out there. And it's good content. Thank Great you. content. Thank you. And I'm just thankful that we were able to have the conversation. And, you know, fortunately, you know, Damien wasn't able to be there with us, but he was watching mm -hmm. uh, with us uh, tonight. And I'm hoping that at some point, you know, we'll get a chance to so do it all together with the full the full team. But uh, before you all before you leave, uh, Darren, if you could just go ahead and just share your social media information mm -hmm. so that people can follow what you all are doing on a different um, social media outlets. So you can follow my personal page. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Darren, D-A-R-E-N underscore Fret, F-R-E-T-T. -T. Uh, you can follow me on my Instagram page, which is It's Andrew Fret. So that's I-T-S Andrew Fret, um, F-R-E-T-T. -T. Um, I've just now created a, another Instagram account, but this is for the education growth part of it, um, which is Fret Math, because you know, um, I love math. I want to be a math teacher. So you can follow me on there at F-R-E-T-T -T math. So fret math. All right. And then for the, the team accounts, if you could share the team accounts, uh, that'd be awesome as well. All right. You can follow uh, Future Educators Talk on our Instagram page at Future Educators Talk on our Twitter page at future edu that's edu uh, talk on our Twitter page and uh, on our Facebook make sure you like our like bleh. <laughs> make sure you like our Facebook page at future educators talk um, so that and also our YouTube channel as well so that you be subscribed when all new episodes comes out and awesome. have the bell as well. And I'm so. gonna just awesome. I'm gonna flash uh, Damien's information as well because he is watching with us today. Mm -hmm. So if you all want to follow the other co-host, uh, Damien Anderson, you can see him on Instagram at the Damien Anderson, on Twitter at underscore Damien Anderson, and you could also find him right here on Facebook by his name, Damien Anderson. And then he has another alternative Instagram account at D Anderson Math. So I guess he loves math as well. Yes. Yes. And then make sure you all follow all the future educators talk accounts throughout all their social media outlets. Uh, so Darren, uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you tonight. And I just wish you and Damien nothing but continued success as you move forward into season four of Future Educators Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. All right. You have a good night. You too. All right. Thank you. So there you have it, people. Another episode of A Day Talk of Educators Live has come to a close in the books. And before we sign off, I just want to make a couple of announcements. So for those who have been following the show, you already know that we have a quarantine sale going on for uh, both of my books. We have Shape the Teacher Identity, Eight Lessons That Help to Find a Teacher in You. And we have the newest edition, From an Action to an Action, Creating a New Normal for Urban Educators. Both of these books you can get for $25. They're on sale from now up until June 1st. If you're interested in getting a copy, you can just tag your name in the comments or send a DM to either my personal account, Kwame Sarfamensa, or to the Aday Talk Consulting account. And we'll take it from there. 
And also, if you want to be a guest on the show, just send me an email at adaytalkforeducators at gmail.com. We're not just looking for the traditional educators who are in the classrooms doing the work. We're looking for community members who are educating their uh, community. We're looking for coaches. We're looking for advocates, activists, anybody who is doing something positive in the community and elevating the minds of the community members. We want you to be on the show so you can share your story, share your resources, and let people know how you're transforming others in the process. So make sure you send me that email at adaytalkforeducators at gmail.com. Be looking forward to hearing the results. And we have another episode that's going to be coming on again next Monday. So um, stay tuned. And that's all I have for today. So until next time, I wish you good morning, good night, good afternoon, and we're going to do this again. All right, peace out, people.